What's good, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking about information on saving money on your taxes by way of home ownership. So this video is going to be for those of you guys who actually own a home. And this video is actually going to apply to a lot of different categories of people. But this is going to apply to those of you who actually own a home and may not be taking advantage of all of the tax benefits that you can have just from having a home or owning a home. This video is also going to apply to those of you who may be already owning a home but are about to you know get a new home. These are some things that you can take advantage of in regards to saving money on taxes. Things that you may not have known about in your current home and that you might want to take advantage of in this new home especially one of the things that I'm going to mention to you which is something that is going to apply to you doing something new with your home and it's going to be relatively larger than the other tax savings I'm going to mention on its own. So make sure you stay tuned for that and that also applies to you guys that already own a home currently and this video also is going to apply to those of you who probably do not own a home yet and you may be you are thinking about getting a home you weren't aware that you could have so many benefits that might benefit you let's say if you're in a high income situation where you have extremely high income and your credit isn't where it needs to be which is why you haven't purchased a home yet and maybe you actually end up owing taxes at the end of the year and having to pay the government something well if you were able to purchase a home, then you would be able to take advantage of some of these tax strategies that can actually help you to lower how much you actually owe. And this might be your motivation to go ahead and actually start working on your credit so that you can purchase a home and take advantage of some of these benefits that you have been missing out on. And these aren't just going to be the general run of the mill things that you might be able to save taxes on. So make sure that you're staying tuned for all of the things I'm going to mention to you that can potentially help you put more money back in your pocket and not not have to pay the IRS so much. So you can see the title, can your home save you up to $30,000 on your taxes? We're going to find out now. And if you guys don't know me, I'm Will Frazier, your credit and business expert. And if you would like to learn more things about business, business strategies, accounts that you can get for your business to obtain funding and things in regards to your personal credit, improving it and accounts that you might get in regards to it, like a home, then make sure you like this video by hitting the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you'll be notified of any new videos I drop just like this one. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, before we get started into this, I just need everybody to know that this is not tax or legal advice. I am not a CPA or an accountant, an attorney. I'm not any of that. This is simply me displaying some information or putting some information on you guys' radar, but this is not to be considered tax or legal advice have to put that disclaimer out there before getting started. Now, a major thing that you really need to know before looking at any of this is the difference between a standard deduction and an itemized deduction because this is going to determine what is going to be the best um, method that you need to choose or the, the best route that you need to go in regards to trying to save money on your taxes and this is going to help show you if doing some of the strategies will even be beneficial to you when it actually comes down to tax time and saving money on your taxes. Now as you know everybody is going to be making some type of income throughout the year. At the end of the year the IRS has certain rates that they charge you based on the amount of income that you make and then this generates a tax bill. Now the way that you offset that tax bill and either end up not paying them anything or end up getting a refund back is for you to get deductions and to get credits, refundable credits that actually end up giving money back to you if you don't owe the IRS anything. And these two different items play into that. The standard deduction is going to be something that you are automatically given by the government. So it is something to help lower your possible tax liability that you might have. So they automatically give anybody that's a single person that's filing taxes $12,550. Now, if you're married, you get a lot more than that. If you're a married filer filing jointly, then you get $25,000. $510 as a standard deduction against your income. Again, to try to lower how much you might possibly owe or eliminate how much you might owe to the IRS, this is something that the government just gives you. Now, when your taxes are being filed, you have the option of choosing to take this standard deduction that they give you 
or you can do an itemized deduction, meaning that you have you know certain records or certain different categories of expenses that total up to a certain amount that you would like the IRS to deduct for you instead of the standard deduction. Now, everything that we're gonna be talking about now is going to be considered an itemized deduction. But the only way that it makes sense for you to take these itemized deductions is if the total amount of them would be greater than this 12,000 something or greater than this 25,000 something if you're married so again this is something that you automatically get the standard deduction if your itemized deductions that we're going to talk about and there are other itemized deductions that you can put on your taxes other than the things that we're going to mention so if all of those things total up to be more than these two numbers here then it would make sense for you to go ahead and choose itemized deduction so I just wanted to explain that so you can make sure that you do know if you would benefit from these methods or not and not just blindly try to go with the itemized deduction just because you know you're hearing this information today so make sure it makes sense for you and your household first now moving on the first thing that you're going to be able to use as an itemized deduction is going to be a home office i know a lot of you guys have um you know maybe stop working at your jobs now you know it's a great resignation going on and maybe you guys have started a business or maybe you just already had a business from the jump anyway you don't have a office building anymore or you don't work at a out of an office building now you are actually working from home so if you're in that situation where you're working from home you can get a deduction for your home office now there are two different ways you can do this there's a simplified way and then there's a more complex way with the simplified way which is what we're going to talk about you get a standard amount that you can take which is up to fifteen hundred dollars and that is based off the square footage of your office in your home so basically they give you five dollars per square foot up to 300 square feet which totals up to fifteen hundred dollars so if you just want to do it the simplified way get fifteen hundred dollars as an itemized deduction then boom that's all you have to do now if you have better record keeping strategies in place already and you have records of more advanced things that you're actually paying for with your home office there's actually more advanced calculations like if your office is say 10 percent of your you know your home square footage or something like that you can actually get into deducting your mortgage amount of like 10 percent of your mortgage amount would apply towards that 10% of space in your home which is your office and with some of your bills and stuff like that but of course you have to have better record keeping and I believe the cap is way more than 1500 I believe the cap when you use that method is whatever your gross revenue is so a much greater potential of savings there but you know again that's more complex and I just wanted to give you a simple idea of how you can use this as a deduction when it's time to file your taxes so that's that's going to be the first thing that you can try now another way that you can save money on your taxes is through property taxes when you own a home you end up paying property taxes on a yearly basis on your home now what the government allows you to do is to deduct up to ten thousand dollars in property taxes so basically it's gonna be dependent upon what your you know your rate is that you're paying for property taxes where you live but they are allotting you up to ten thousand dollars that you can deduct from that so again if you aren't taking advantage of some of these things and of course the itemized deduction will benefit you then of course this is something that you want to look into and start making sure that you are talking to your tax professional that you work with and seeing if this is something that's going to make sense with you in addition to the other things that we're going to talk about now the next thing that you want to take a look into that most people aren't really taking a look into is going to be the investment tax credit now what this is is something that is related to solar costs so getting solar for your home which is a whole nother benefit that that provides with savings as far as your power bill but the investment tax credit is actually something where you can take up to 26 percent of your costs for putting solar on your home that's the panels the batteries the installation the little extra parts that you need to have for it everything that goes into the cost of you obtaining solar the government is actually allowing you to take 26 percent 
of that total cost. Now, this used to be 30%, but it has since been lowered as time has passed as this act that was put in place for this credit was supposed to diminish over time. And this is actually something that you guys really want to jump on soon because, and this is why I'm putting it on your radar, because next year it's going to drop from 26% to 22%. So in 2023, you won't be able to take off as much and get a credit for it as you can if you invest in solar this year and the another thing that you really need to know is that it expires in 2024 so in 2024 you won't be able to get any type of credit so if you have a home or if you are looking into getting a new home or if you're probably going to be thinking about getting solar this year then um, you probably want to go ahead and act on that because you're losing a major benefit that you can get because no one else is really going to give you money towards your solar investment which can be a sizable investment but that's why they have financing for it and just to get an idea of how much that you could potentially save with something like this let's say you got a system that costs 40,000 you know all together with all things included getting it installed getting it put on your house getting it up and running all of that came up to forty thousand dollars let's say you finance that and then you're making payments on that so now because the system cost total was forty thousand dollars you get to get 26 percent of that forty thousand back in credits for your taxes so that would equal ten thousand four hundred dollars in savings that you can apply to anything that you might owe in regards to your taxes now this is the item that i was talking about that on its own can be a pretty sizable tax deduction that you can get and with this tax deduction a credit that you're going to get this one is not refundable so you won't be able to get cash back with it but some extra benefits that you get with it if you had purchased a new solar system the year prior you can apply this to the previous year and also if you don't have a tax liability this year or from the previous year then you can actually roll this over up to 20 years into the future so if you do have a tax liability that's going to come up or that you may not know of of course or you are expecting your income to go up where you might have a tax liability like this then you can have this saved up for you so that you can cover that liability going 20 years into the future now in order to qualify for this you do have to install a new system you also do have to own your home you can't be renting the home and in regards to uh, owning a new system or installing a new system you cannot be leasing the system in order for you to be able to qualify for this this has to be a system that you are purchasing and you know if you're financing it that's fine but you have to be financing it to purchase it not just as a lease and again you can't be renting the home that you're living in or leasing the home you have to be actually purchasing the home so you know have a mortgage on it it has to be your home now if you check all those boxes then you actually qualify to get this big credit that you can use to help lower or you know totally eliminate some of your tax obligations and with that being said for those of you that are actually interested in trying to get solar there's actually a really good company that's out there now the company that i'm referring to is called energy pal as you can see here they have 4.9 stars on google so they are definitely highly rated and are what i would consider a very good company to work with if you're looking into getting solar and that's why i'm recommending them to you today now some of the things that i really love about them is you can see in their mission you can see here they say we are energy geeks on a mission to provide you with quality home solar and energy storage solutions at lower prices from founding to multinational reach we focus on providing you unmatched value and customer support we keep our costs lower and give you more choice using our proprietary recommendation system both you and the earth benefit from our hard work making solar simple and more affordable so they really make an effort to try to make sure you are getting quality products as far as the components to the system that you will be getting and they also really try to focus on making sure that you're getting the best value so they're not trying to knock you over the head for price they are trying to make sure you are getting the best deal possible and i will have a link to them down in the description so you can check them out and i'm sure that they will give you the best deal possible on a quality system because you don't want the best deal on a system that's going to go out on you in the next few months a few years you want something that's going to be quality that you can actually trust will be there for the life of your home now these are the states 
states that they cover they actually cover canada as well as the u.s so you can see the areas for canada here you can see the areas for the u.s here they have several states that they actually do cover so take a look at this list and see if they are working in a place where you reside so that you can take advantage of this and as you already know the major benefits of having solar is to be able to not only get the tax credit that i mentioned but to make sure that you're not paying a whole bunch of money for electricity which can be pretty expensive so with something like this you can reach out see what they have to offer you you can get your system financed through them uh, you do have to have reasonably good credit to be able to get this i would say you probably want to be around the mid sixes if you're thinking about trying to actually finance a system like this for your home and if you aren't at that point in your credit yet just know that i have a bunch of resources on this channel that you can use to try to get your credit to a better place so that you might be able to qualify to be able to get something like this for your home take advantage of the savings on your power bill and take advantage of these tax savings that you can get from doing the same thing as well so again you want to reach out to energy pal the link to them is down in the description now let's continue on to the next things that you need to know about to try to save money on your taxes so right here we can see interest expense this is one that most of you guys have probably heard about or know about but with interest expense basically every payment that you make is going to be interest usually of course at the beginning of the mortgage payment you're paying a lot more in interest included in that amount that you pay for your payment versus when you get all the way to the end of the loan so what they allow you to do is take off or deduct the amount that you paid in interest and mortgage payments on your taxes so usually you're going to get a form 1098 in the mail so once you get that form for your taxes in the mail you'll be able to see how much interest you have available that you have paid that you can deduct when you file your taxes and when it comes down to that i can say you know looking at the example of a two hundred thousand dollar home you can save around about three thousand dollars or so and just to give you an example of where that number is coming from if you go to bankrate.com you can see they have a mortgage tax deduction calculator so you can get an idea of how much you can have in tax savings based on this calculator and as you can see here two hundred thousand dollar home 30 year term 4.5 percent interest rate they got the federal and state tax rates there monthly payment around a thousand dollars you can see here that your first year tax savings can be anywhere around three thousand three hundred and ninety of course some of these variables can be offered different depending on what your actual mortgage was and what the rates were when you actually got it but this is good estimate or idea of the type of tax savings that you can have by trying to use this particular deduction so definitely don't sleep on that and make sure that you are taking advantage of this opportunity if you do own a home now another thing that you guys want to pay attention to and look for is the fact that if you paid for points when you actually purchased your home that is a type of prepaid interest as well now if you're unsure of what paying for points is basically how it works is like this if you want to purchase a point while you're trying to obtain your mortgage and going through that process there's going to be a cost associated with the point and that point can be used to lower your interest rate so one point is usually going to be equal to one percent of the mortgage amount so if we had a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage it would be about two thousand dollars that you would pay to get one point now what can you do with that one point one point is usually going to be equivalent to about 0.25 percent off of your rate so if you pay that two thousand dollars get one point you'll be able to take a quarter of the interest rate off and actually get a lower interest rate with that now let's say for example you wanted to lower your interest rate by you know half a percent which can be a significant difference in your payment you would pay four thousand dollars on this two hundred thousand dollar home and you would save half a percent off of your interest rate so this is a good way to try to you know get down to a lower interest rate if the rates at that time aren't favorable and you see the value in paying that rate down so now looking at that if you did try to do this where you took off a half a percent of your rate that's four thousand dollars that you can now use towards deductions because of this money that is costing you to be able to get these points to be able to lower this interest rate so if you haven't heard of this this is definitely something that you might want to take advantage of when you're trying to get a home and make sure that you take note of that so that you can get the tax savings that come with that as well now going on to the next item private mortgage insurance 
So if you are unaware of what private mortgage insurance is, it's an insurance that is put on the home, which is to the benefit of the person that is providing you the loan. Of course, it is not a benefit towards you. This is in case you don't pay off the loan. So with private mortgage insurance, it can cost you anywhere from half a percent to 2% of your mortgage amount during the course of a year. So that would determine how much you would end up paying in a year for this mortgage insurance. And of course, it's breaking down into all of your payments. Now, let's say with that same $200,000 mortgage example, you could be paying anywhere from an extra thousand to $4,000 a year based on what rate your mortgage insurance ends up being put at. Now, when it comes to mortgage insurance, private mortgage insurance, you only have to pay it on conventional loans that don't have 20% equity, meaning you did not put 20% down payment down on that to create that 20% equity. But once you actually have paid down enough of your mortgage loan to the fact where you do have 20% or equity, or you know maybe appreciation helps you out there, then you can get rid of that private mortgage insurance. But until then, you will be paying it. So if you're gonna be paying it, you might as well be getting a tax benefit from it because that is, again, a sizable amount that you can use to deduct some money off of your taxes and either lower how much you might owe or eliminate owing anything. Now, with everything that we've mentioned and everything that we've talked about, you have looked at about a total tax savings that you could have, of course, it's gonna depend on the scenario, of about $30,000 or so. It can be, you know, less than that. It can be more than that, depending on your situation, you know, how much you actually qualify for. And as you can see, this number is higher than both of those numbers for the standard deduction, which was that 12,000 and that 25,000. So if you were in a situation where your number did equal something like this, it would make sense to go towards the itemized deduction and save a little bit more money on your taxes. Again, this is just me giving you guys some examples of some numbers on what you could potentially be saving on your taxes. This is not tax advice or legal advice, but hopefully you still found this information very useful and you found something that might apply to you that interests you or sparked your interest and you want to try to look at that, especially with it being close to tax time right now. So you're probably looking into filing if you haven't already. These are some things you can talk to your tax professional about and see if it's going to benefit you. Now, I hope you guys appreciated this information. It always feels good to tap into my old realtor days when I used to have to look at stuff like this a little bit more deeply when it comes to housing but i appreciate you for sticking around to the end of the video make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and share this information with somebody that you know might need it subscribe to the channel if you want to receive more information like this and i'll see you guys next time